let's start off by talking about your daily routine. Tell me about your daily routine. Okay, well, I wake up around 8 a.m. Every morning it's like clockwork. And I brush my teeth, I wash my face, breakfast, um, and then I get in my car and I drive to work. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. I come back home and uh, fix myself up some dinner and watch some Netflix. Very average, mundane. How has your daily routine changed since Mm -hmm. you were a child? Not much, except I go to work now instead of school. Um, but, uh, I get a lot of free time over the weekends, so I get to do the things I like to do, such as meditation and writing. I love journaling. I'd love to put out some novels one day. Um, I always thought that I would retire to the countryside in my old age with my animals and write books. So yeah, so writing, um, yoga, what else do I do on the weekends? Oh, I want to try horse riding as well. Is your daily routine different at the weekend compared to during the week? Yes, 100%. So uh, the weekdays are for work, mainly being productive, paying the bills, and the weekends I get to do whatever I want to do. So really treasure and enjoy my weekends. Let's talk now about dreams. Mm -hmm. Do you dream much at night? I do dream sometimes, but not very often. And when I do dream, I don't tend to remember my dreams. Do you think we can learn anything from dreams? I think so. I think there's lots of repressed emotions and stress that come out um, during our dreams uh, that perhaps we haven't addressed in real life. So yes, I, I believe we can learn quite a lot. And I suppose some people can even, you know, predict the future through dreams or images that they see. I'm kind of on the fence about that. I don't know, but seems credible. Now let's talk about email. What kind of emails do you receive about your work? I receive a lot of emails from my higher ups. So my manager, people from other departments as well, usually following up for things um, or scheduling meetings, um, just a lot of work that needs to be done and reminders to please do this work so do you normally reply to emails as soon as you receive them oh no um i don't because i feel like there's no point in replying if the work hasn't been done so let's say we're supposed to schedule a meeting and something needs to be done i'd much prefer to get that thing done and then respond by saying okay here it is here's the file that you um that you requested or that you asked for And, um, yeah, instead of, you know, a random sort of, hello, well received, thank you. Are you happy to receive emails that are advertising things? No, I don't think anyone would be. Unless it's for a brand that I follow or that I like, unless they're having a sale. um, In that case, I'd be more than happy to receive their emails. Now let's talk about exercise. How often do you exercise? Not as often as I would like. I find the gym to be quite tedious and boring. I prefer doing classes, but then to get myself to the class and sit through traffic, coming back. So I would love to work out a bit more frequently. And I I tend to like slower exercises such as yoga or swimming, something where I don't really have to break a sweat, which is not very um, realistic, but yeah. What do you think is the best exercise to keep fit? Mm, I've tried Pilates. I think it's really good for toning the the body and the muscles. And you see a big difference. It might not burn as many calories, but you do see a huge difference in your uh, silhouette. So have the types of exercise people like to do changed since you were a child? I would say not really the types of exercises that people do. I would say they just don't exercise as much. Perhaps it's gone from cycling and tennis to dancing on TikTok. I think that would be the main difference, if I'm really honest. Describe a time when you enjoyed visiting a family member or friends. I went back to Taiwan uh, last month and I stayed for about three weeks. I was visiting friends and family. Um... 
but uh, I don't really have much family in Taiwan, just my mum. So I've noticed that, you know, in life, when you don't have a lot of family, the universe brings you friends. And it might sound a bit cliche, but friends really are the family that, you know, you've chosen. And so I've now moved away from Taiwan, but when I was there, made a lot of very, very good, I think, lifelong friends who I go back and visit periodically. I visited Shirley. I've been friends with her since I was 15. So that's about 15 years now. So you can guess my age. Um, Tiffany, I've known her since I was 18. Um, Cyril, Eva. So I visited these friends in particular. We just pretty much, not to sound boring, we just hung out and talked a lot, caught up a lot on life, what's been happening, who are you dating, you know, are you happy? So there was a lot of that over wine or tea. And um, I also went and visited Cyril's new uh, restaurant. And he's been doing really, really well for himself. I'm very happy about that. We went and visited um, Jackie and um, found out that he was actually also back in Taiwan for his wedding. So we went to his wedding, had a bit too much whiskey, but that's okay. We won't repeat that experience. Um, it was fun in, in general. It was, it was a lot of fun. Um, it was lovely to see Tiffany and Eva because they both had babies during the past one or two years. And it was lovely to see them, yeah. So we've been talking about people that you visited and we're going to continue to talk about family. When do families celebrate together in your country? Chinese New Year, that's a big one. Uh, the Mid-Autumn Festival, that's also a big one. Any celebration really is an excuse for the family to get together, which can be a bit stressful at times because we all know how we feel about our families. We love them, but it's sort of a love-hate relationship because they can get on our nerves sometimes, but oh well. <laughs> Why is it that some people might not enjoy attending family gatherings? I think because... You know, relatives especially get it in their heads that they're family and so they think they can ask any questions. You know, when are you going to get married? That's a big one. When are you going to have a baby? Why are you wasting your time? So that, that can be a bit stressful because the whole point of, you know, being on vacation, because now to see my family, I have to go on vacation and go back to my country to see them, is to relax uh, not to get stressed out. So I think a lot of people have the same experience. Now let's talk about everyday life in families. Do you think it is a good thing for parents to help their children with their homework? Yes, I think it's a very good thing. I think it's important to have your mum or your dad present in your childhood. It's very good for mental health, so you don't need to see a therapist when you grow up. How important do you think it is for families to eat dinner together? Oh, very, very, very important. It's important to feel that connection because you could be people living in the same house if you don't communicate regularly, interact regularly. What's the point of having a family? What's the point of having, you know, your parents around then if they're not going to be parents? Do you believe that everyone in a family should share chores? Yes, I think so. I think uh, that's very important. However... Let's say if dad is out working most of the week, then maybe he doesn't need to do as many chores. I know it might sound a bit sexist, but it's really about, um, um, what's the word, distributing work evenly. One, you did a great job with part one. It was like talking to a colleague, talking to a friend. Um, you didn't really have to think much about the answers. You didn't really have to think about the language you were using. It was all very, very natural. One thing, I don't think this is going to be a huge issue for you, um, but sometimes under pressure on exam day, some students do this and you do it a little bit, mm -hmm. which is you list lots of things. If you did that with too many answers mm. you're indicating to the examiner i don't really know how to construct a sentence exactly right exactly <laughs> so it is much better to pick one or two things and go mm. deep on those things mm. rather than go wide so going wide is just you know what's your favorite food i like pizza i like burgers i like sushi i like thai i like it 
is better to pick one of those. I like Thai because, and explain why that is. So that allows you to really show off your grammar, show off your vocabulary, because your grammar and vocabulary is amazing. We want to show that to the examiner. I don't think it's going to be an issue for you. But as I said, some people, when they're practicing, mm. um, do amazingly well. And then as soon as you, I call it test mode, as soon as they get going to the test, they start to do these little weird things <laughs> that are kind of defensive. Mm-hmm. And for someone like you, we don't want you to be defensive. We want to show how, how good you are. Part two, you had no problem talking about that. You could have talked about that for many more minutes than, than two minutes. Um, and I have no no feedback on that. It's just, it was really, really good. Part three, you did develop your answers probably enough, but you could have developed them a little bit more. You could have possibly shown the other side of things. You, you mm. talked about everything kind of from a personal point of view, which is good because it's you're very fluent when you do that. Just remember part three is a, a discussion of ideas. So it's good to think, well, I really think this, but I can sort of see why other people would mm. think this way. Okay. Um, so for example, do you think it's a good idea for parents to help children with their schoolwork? Now that's pretty obvious that yes, that's a good thing, but you could say something like, however, I understand that some moms and dads are really busy mm. um, and they don't have time to do that. I don't agree with that, mm-hmm. but I can understand why. Why is it that some people might not enjoy attending family uh, occasions? You gave a very straight answer, which was very, very good. Um, <laughs> but you could have maybe, well, that's what I feel. But maybe there's this other reason why people, um, you don't need to list, you know, five mm-hmm. different reasons, but maybe say, but some people might not. Have these issues, perhaps, yeah. Yeah, yeah or something like that. Mm. Pronunciation. You would get a band nine, which is the top band, because you, your, you. your your pronunciation is is perfect. Um, not just accent. So a lot of people watching this video will listen to you and think, oh, she has a beautiful British accent. And that is something that people can strive for, but they don't need a particular type of British accent to do well. You could have a Taiwanese accent, an Indian accent, a Vietnamese accent, and still get a band nine, Mm. it's more about the clarity of your accent Mm. rather than the type of accent that you have. Now, you do have one of those very uh, admired accents for people on our channel. So people will be very impressed with that. But people watching shouldn't think, I need to sound more British Um, because it's not a a British RP test. Mm -hmm. It is a, (laughs) you know, it is a, a an English test. Clarity. I understood 100% of what you were saying. And then you also have very high level pronunciation features such as intonation. So you show meaning and humor and things like that through intonation. You also show that through um, sentence stress. So sentence stress is like, this is my phone. This isn't your phone. So you emphasize certain words to display meaning. Your connected speech is great. So if somebody's learning, they might say, do you want to go to the coffee shop? So everything is perfectly clear, but how you would say it, do you want to go to the coffee shop? Do you want to go? So it sounds kind of like one continuous sign or word. So band nine for pronunciation. Coherence and fluency are in the same band and you get whatever is lowest. So if your Mm. coherence is band eight, and your fluency is band nine, you get a band eight and vice versa. Your fluency is perfect. If you listen to someone who is learning English, their fluency suffers because they're trying to fetch the correct word or the correct phrase, or should I use past simple or present perfect? Mm -hmm. You don't have any issues with that, and you don't have any issues with ideas and information. You're just without effort. Your coherence, coherence is did you answer the question and did you develop it enough? You did, but we need to be careful with that if you did the real test, Mm. because as I said, your fluency could be perfect, but you're not developing your answers enough, which could drag you down. I don't think it would, but we need to do out of abundance of of, of caution. Grammar, I didn't hear a single grammar mistake. So the examiner will be thinking about accuracy. Did she make any mistakes and range? Mm. Does she have enough tenses, enough grammatical structures to talk about the things that she wants to talk about. So, for example, I asked you 
about how has exercise changed since you were a child. <sighs> that requires you to use past simple, present perfect, things like that. You had no problem with that whatsoever. So ban nine for grammar. Okay. Ban nine for vocabulary as well, because you used amazing idiomatic vocabulary like this. A native English speaker will use idiomatic phrases, which are phrases that learners don't really know how to use. You only really know how to use them if you grew up in an English speaking country or you got to a very, very high level of English. Vocabulary is very precise and accurate and you have a huge range of vocabulary. You could talk about any topic that I could throw at you. So band nine all, all across the board. Thank you. Which is extremely rare. Uh, less than 1% of people get a band nine. Oh, wow. Okay, well, thank you very much. I'll work on my coherence. It is true I tend to think out loud, so maybe it's not coherent in that sense because I'm just basically listing in my head, yeah. Yeah, yeah. all good. Thank you very much. Thank you.